Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, uh, Mr. Speaker. I must say, um, before I begin, that I, I miss you on my left side because normally, you know, we you keep me updated on a mutual interest. But um, that's for another show. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, if you give me permission just to respond to the member for Viewport South briefly um, and some of the comments that he, he made, uh, the, the contribution. And I want to make it very clear, Mr. Speaker, that I hold no brief for any bank, despite having worked in the banking sector for the past 35 years. But I think um, it's important that um, we take into account the lessons that have been reflected all around us regionally, internationally, as to some politicians having to pay a very heavy price for using public funds for their own personal and private use, Mr. Speaker. And how, Mr. Speaker, it's a matter of Peter now paying for Paul. Because many, many cases, Mr. Speaker, politicians have been found gravely wanting um, in their actions. And so, Mr. Speaker, certain protection the bank has its part to play. I must also, you know, and, and, and the member for Viewport South may think I'm taking a swipe at him. Um, it's a real unfortunate that he, the position that he's speaking very vociferously at this point. But we must not remember, we must not forget that the member was was the chair of the Monetary Council on more than one occasion. And, all my I, 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 and, and, I'm, and I'm hoping that you know he took the opportunity then to of have I made very, very strong, a strong contribution. But we do, we do share the same passion with regards to how the banks currently are making some of our people unbankable. And that's a very important thing, I think, that we need to, to, to address. Um, unfortunately, um, I was selected as a chair to lead a banking committee in the House, and we have not been able to meet to discuss our target to the, to, the, to, the, to the banks in terms of how we address some of what we believe is some very unfair practices and charges to a larger section of our population. Mr. Speaker, I believe any parliamentarian who would stand in this chamber this morning and not support this bill would be, the head would definitely need checking, Mr. Speaker. Because any, any facility that will go to the development of our people, to improve the skills of our young people in particular, must be commended and must be applauded, Mr. Speaker. In fact, I have been very consistent over the years indicating that governments must borrow. Governments must borrow, but we must always look very closely at the borrowing. And I was very happy this morning to hear the Honorable Prime Minister finally acknowledge and give credence to the monies that were borrowed during the COVID period to pay civil servants and keep civil servants employed and keep civil servants with their salary. I was very happy that he made that, uh, that, that, that statement this morning. Because you would recall, Mr. Speaker, the way this government, our the past government, you know, was ostracized and, and, and Every week when we came to, to borrow some money, I think the member for library even penned it, Madi Puede, Madi, Madi Puede, Madi, Madi Puede. So Mr. Speaker, I was happy that the, the Prime Minister acknowledged that the funds went to a very good use, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, the other issue I have is, while I commend borrowing to improve the skills of our population, particularly our young people, I think we need to be very consistent in how we go about, you know, heaping praise or, or, or identifying young people that require training. Because I remember how the current government, when in opposition, we were admonished for supporting two companies in the South, ITEL BPO and Ojo Labs, for providing skills to young people, skills that they could travel with, Mr. Speaker, okay, and market themselves. We, the, the, the opposition then felt that these monies were not being put to proper use by supporting this, this organization. In fact, Mr. Speaker, you will recall, you recall prior to that, these monies by the government when they were in, 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 in office, they were actually going to support young people to work in establishments, to buy groceries, buy goods, and even 
even to support farmers, Mr. Speaker. That's a fact. I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it, Mr. Speaker. No, I am saying that was a component. That was a component of it, Mr. Speaker. I am bring it. I am saying I, I I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Well, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Bring it. Bring it. I am saying. I am saying, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I am saying that this administration, this administration did not support the fact that the, the last administration provided funds to, to provide skills to hundreds, if not thousands, of young people in the South who today are providing income to their households, Mr. Speaker, young people who have been able to elevate themselves, young people who have been able to move on move on because of the skills that they learned then, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, and you know, Mr. Speaker, and, 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 and the skills training, Mr. Speaker, must be taken in, in various facets. And, I, and, and, and my colleague, my friend on the other side, who's pointing at me, I want, I want to take a, a swipe at him this morning. I want to take a swipe at him this morning because I'm hearing something and I'm hoping, I'm hoping, Mr. Speaker, that he's not part of it because he's currently responsible for Invest and Lucia, and I'm sure he's aware of the amount of money that Invest and Lucia paid to ensure that certain lands in the Shozel community remained as local lands. And I'm hearing that these lands are currently, and, I, and, and I'm hoping he can correct me to really put it at rest, that these lands are currently in, in, in being contested to go to another ministry for, another ministry for housing development. Some of the most fertile lands in Shozel where farming could be mechanized. In fact, when we, when we were in office, I remember, Mr. Speaker, we spent a considerable amount of money purchasing a very large pump, pipes and everything to run irrigation for farmers, because at that time there was supposed to have been a farm, farmers displaced to Shozel. And a lot of these pipes, Mr. Speaker, have been stolen. Building has been vandalized. The only thing left is the, is the pump. And I'm hoping everything is done to secure that because the plan was to provide farming lots for these farmers. And I'm hoping you protect that for Shozelians. As somebody with Rosel blood, I hope you protect that for Shozelians. So, Mr. Speaker, I just want to say any, any, a, any initiative to upskill our people is welcome and I support it. But we must be very consistent and we must be very careful in our approach. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.